What's up, everybody? Welcome to the World of CONCACAF podcast. My name is Eric Schmitz. My name is Donald Wine. And Jonathan's not with us, but we've got a news desk episode here. Honestly, the most important thing we could possibly be talking about. Donald, it is the return of CONCACAF Nations League. I'm just overwhelmed, just giddy with excitement for this upcoming month. Oh, I'm not overwhelmed. This has been on my calendar for years, baby. We ready. Let's do it. Listen, since I was a small child, I've just dreamed of covering uh, CONCACAF Nations League. And my dreams just continue to be fulfilled from even from when I was a small boy. I just was thinking it's like, I can't wait for CONCACAF Nations League when we're here. When we were both on the playgrounds uh, in separate cities, not knowing each other for like no. 20 years before this, uh, we both yeah. had dreams of doing this and we're living out our dreams once again, because Nations League was like, yo, this is so great. We're just going to come back and make it bigger and better. And they didn't do any of those things, but it's still great. It's yeah. still the greatest thing. I'm just Man, it's it's just been a year. We had the long qualifying, and now we're back to real business. It's the CONCACAF Nations League. Kicks off, and we got a four-match window, like expanded June window. We got a lot of games. We got a lot to cover. Uh, so we're going to get through it. We're going to go through all the leagues and tell you what you need to know heading into this big tournament. Uh, as you probably already know, if you're in the U.S., Paramount Plus is your go-to. They got – almost all the games on their schedule, check your local listings. There's going to be games going on all almost all day for a solid two week stretch. Also uh, Televisa Univision, which is like the, you know, Televisa and Univision were both separate companies and they've recently merged. Uh, oh. They have the Spanish rights, at least in the United States uh, for all the CONCACAF uh, going forward. They basically had to redo those rights since they each had a little bit of, of bits and pieces of, uh, different competitions, but now they got them all, baby. So if you want to watch the Spanish, Televisa Univision is your place to place to be. Uh, if you want to watch it English here in the United States, it's Paramount Plus. And hopefully, you know, as this tournament, as CBS recognizes how great this tournament is, they may do things like you know bump Europa League for for putting this on like CBS Sports Network or CBS. Oh yeah, for sure. Eventually, everyone will learn to respect uh, Concacaf Nations League. Uh, so, so what we're going to do, we're going to go through league by league um, just to give you a glimpse of like what to be looking for here. We're going to start with League B. Now, as you know, with CONCACAF Nations League, there are three leagues. There's League A, League B, League C. League B, if you finish first in your group, it's four four-team groups. If you finish first in your group, you're promoted to League A for the next edition, which will be 2024-25. And you get a spot in the 2023 Gold Cup. If you finish second in your group, you get a spot in the prelims of the 2023 Gold Cup. So you'll have a chance to qualify for that tournament. If you finish in fourth, you get relegated to the League C of the 2024-25 CONCACAF Nations League. So one, two, and four, there's consequences for your actions. If you finish third, you're just hanging out in League B for 2024-25. So we're going to go through the groups. We're going to start with Group A. Donald, why don't you start? We'll kind of alternate and go team by team in these groups. Yeah, so uh, Cuba, they're ranked 177th. They actually dropped. They are one of the teams that relegated from League A to League B uh, based on finishing third in their group last time around. Uh, I will mention that they are playing their home games at Estadio Antonio Museo in Santiago. Um, they had to play neutral sites in 2019, 2020, which Eric, you and I know uh, well very aware. well playing at, you know, shout out Truman Baden uh, sports complex. Bless um, but, but Cuba will be playing at home. They're just not going to be playing in Habana. They're going to be playing in Santiago. Yeah. Uh, Guadalupe is also in group a, uh, the Guada boys, they actually got promoted. They finished first in group D of league C in the last edition of the nation's league. Um, as you know, Guadalupe is not a FIFA country. They don't have a rank, um, but this is as big as it gets for them, as it is for literally any other, other team in the tournament. Uh, next up, Antigua and Barbuda, one of my favorite places in the whole of CONCACAF. Uh, unfortunately, they will not be playing on the beautiful island of Antigua. They are going to be also playing a neutral site. They will be playing in Basseterre, St. Kitts and Nevis, 
uh, at Warner Park Cricket Stadium. So uh, interesting that they will have to do that. They finished third in group. Uh, the, uh, sorry, they finished third in Group C in League B last year. So they remain in League B. They're hoping to get up to League A, and they had a chance last time around to do so. Uh, but they are working up with an uphill battle, not being able to play at home. The Benna Boys. Uh, I hope that they can get it done. Uh, but to do that, they're going to have to get it done with their neighbors. For sure. Uh, and finally, to close out Group A, we've got Barbados, the Bajan Trigents, uh, <laughs> ranked 163rd in the world. They actually were another promoted team. Uh, they finished first in Group A in League C in the last tournament. Uh, and they'll actually also be playing neutral site home matches. They'll actually be in St. Lucia playing their home matches at Darren Sammy Cricket Ground in Gross Islet, St. Lucia. And as you know, we are fervent supporters of soccer on cricket grounds in the Caribbean. At, absolutely. And, and, and as you see out there, uh, there's been a common theme so far, uh, and that is a lot of teams, at least in these lower uh, League B and League C, uh, a lot of them are playing on neutral sites this time around. Yeah. Uh, moving on to Group B. Uh, we'll start with Haiti. Haiti was actually relegated out of League A last time they finished third in Group D. They're playing their home matches in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. Um, as you know, in the past, Haiti has had issues with visiting teams coming in. Um, Security has been an issue. So they're playing their neutral site home mat- their home matches on neutral site um, in this time in the Dominican Republic. I do want to point out Donald, I don't know if you read John Arnold's newsletter this week, uh, but mm-hmm. he did have a mention of the sex abuse scandal uh, coverage that came out on Joe Samar football. Dude, absolutely brutal stuff. Like this report, it basically details that on a visit to Haiti, Set Blatter, the president of the Federation of Haiti, sent an employee to go have sex with Set Blatter as like a gift it's fucked up just detailing rape of players uh the living conditions they've got just all the abuses uh the former president of haiti this federation he was uh suspended by fifa for his banned for life but more and more details keep coming out and it's just absolutely brutal highly recommend you read it and just understand how bad things can get in some of these countries that struggle uh with funds and facilities this is where government intervention or interference needs to happen because those guys need to be in jail point blank period like and if it extends i know you talk about set bladder but it extends to anybody else at fifa they need to get they need to get cut up too because that is that's absolutely awful um what they had to experience down there oh yeah i mean the report also alleges that there was an auditor sent by fifa to go check things out having heard that there were some issues, the auditor was given players, like youth, teenage players to have sex with. Just absurd. And um, the fact that they follow through with it, right? Like it's one thing, right? Alleged, like, alleged, like, you know, right, alleged, you got like, a camera or anything. Yeah. But again, right. Like if, you know, someone sends someone to your room, you have the option like, yo, this is fucked up. Yeah. Go, please go home. Yeah, yeah, please go home. I don't want that. Allegedly, they followed through with it. So again, that's why I said any of these FIFA leaders that got caught up in this, they need to go too. Yeah. So that's Haiti right now. Um, yeah. Bermuda. You want to go next with Bermuda? Yeah, I'll go with Bermuda. The Gombe Warriors. Uh, they they have a chance uh, to get back into this top uh, to League A. Uh, but again, like Haiti, they re- were relegated from League A last time. Uh, right now, uh, and also they have one of the best jerseys in, in all of CONCACAF with those pink home jerseys. Oh, so yeah. um, they're looking, at, I think it's going to be a battle between uh, Bermuda and Haiti for the right to win this group, uh, but it's going to be a tough battle. Bermuda is a tough out. We saw that during Nations League last time. We also saw it during the start of World Cup qualifying uh, that they are a team that is very much a tough battle whenever you take the field against them. Yeah. Uh, Guyana. Also in the group, ranked 174th in the world. They uh, finished second in Group C of League B last time around. Uh, I do want to note that for the Golden Jaguars, that new Nike replica jerseys are on sale soon in the web store. 
So keep an eye out. I know kits are a big deal for this podcast. So if you want that Guiana swag, um, it's going to be available pretty soon. And if you are from Guiana and you find a 2X uh, where you live, (laughs) at Podkickaf on Twitter, uh, Instagram, DM DM us. We'll get, oh, yeah. yeah, make sure just make sure you hang hang with us. Um, I do want to move to the last team in the group, and that's Montserrat, a friend of the podcast forever. Um, unfortunately, they will not be playing on the Volcano Island. The Emerald Boys will be playing in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. Uh, their home matches will be played at that neutral site uh, as well. Yeah. Uh, so that's Group B. Group C. We'll start with Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, Trinidad and Tobago, they were relegated out of League A last time they finished third in Group C, uh, ranked 103rd. As you know, that they didn't advance to the final round of qualifying. Angus Eve, uh, the head coach of the Soka Warriors, I'd noticed that he's also coaching the U20s as well. They're having a camp right now before the U20 championships. Uh, so really interested to see what the squad ends up looking like. They do have a friendly scheduled for May 30th uh, versus St. Lucia. That's going to be a closed door friendly. Next up is Nicaragua. Nicaragua was third in group D in league B last time. So they're looking to make uh, another leap up. Um, They are also releasing new kits on May 31st, but Los Pinoleros, uh, you know, they are a team that again can be very difficult to play, but they have struggled recently uh, when it comes to competitive matches and they're going to hope to get, their swag back here in, in group C. All right. Now our boys team, Vincey heat, Vincey heat. Let's go. St. Vincent, the Grenadines uh, looking to make some moves in group C here. Uh, they finished second in group D of league B last time around ranked 175th in the world. Uh, they are playing their home matches in a place that holds dear place in our hearts. Uh, the Arnos Vale playing field. Um, like I said, Cricket grounds, it's where it's at. Cricket grounds around the Caribbean. Uh, they did also just play a couple of friendlies, tune-up friendlies against Dominica, um, dropping one by score 2-1, and then uh, one by score 3-1. Um, so Vincey Heat, been struggling, but you you got this, boys. Go get them. Go get them, kids. Um, and, and for the last team in Group C is the guys who were – actually promoted from League C, and that's the Bahamas, the Baja boys. Uh, They will be playing their games at home, uh, but again, they kind of have an uphill battle uh, against this group, uh, but they're going to look to make a name for themselves and hopefully remain in League B. All right, so that's Group C. Uh, Donald, do you want to start off Group D? Yeah, so we have Guatemala, the team that is interesting. They obviously were promoted from League C, but because – the only reason they were in League C is because they were suspended at the time uh, from FIFA and could not qualify for where they should be at. This is the team that they are probably hoping that they dominate this group and get to League A um, this time around. But I, I do think they are kind of a struggling mess um, when it comes to World Cup qualifying, where they failed to qualify uh, for the octagonal, even though they had a good shot and Nations League last time where, again, they were relegated to League C uh, and started out there. So they're just looking to, you know, you know, kind of dominate here and get back to League A because I think that's probably where they belong. Well, like the incredible thing about Guatemala is, and we saw it in the early rounds of qualifying, they didn't lose in qualifying. The only yep. two losses they've had since October of 2020 have been Gold Cup games to Mexico and El Salvador. Like, they are not losing games. Uh, they ended up actually going to the gold cup last time. Uh, they lost in on qualifying a technicality. On pe- yeah, they lost in qualifying on penalties because they, they, of course they didn't lose. And then Curacao had to pull out because they got COVID. So, mm-hmm. and of course you remember the coach got fired because they didn't qualify for the gold cup and then they got to go the or gold world cup qualifying. And then yeah. they had to hire a new coach and then recall their players that had just dispersed for the summer. Yeah. Just absolutely absurd. So Guatemala is looking pretty good. Uh, next is French Guiana, uh, Les Yana Docos, um, non-FIFA team, so they don't have a rank. They finished second in Group A of League B last time around. Um, they did recently play Suriname in a friendly, beating them 3-1. So French Guiana, you never know with these non-FIFA teams. They, they can reach out to a, a little bit deeper of a pool. 
I mean, they're they're not going to bring in what's his face, Florent Malouda or whoever it was um, that they played could. from last you time. Know. You uh, know. I mean, we'll see what happens. You know, they don't care about those type of rules uh, based on past precedent, but we'll see what happens with them. Um, next up is the DR Dominican Republic. Um, Los Kiskianos um, are looking to again uh, make the leap up to League A. They finished third in Group B and League B last last time around. Um, but at 155, they're looking to. This is the team that we talk about during World Cup qualifying that showed some promise of being ready to take that next leap. Do they take it in Nations League? We'll find out. Yeah. Now, Donald, I do want to note that the deadline for media requests uh, is June 2nd at 6 p.m. So if you want to cover these games in the Dominican Republic, you got to get that in. I, I, I got to get my uh, media request in, huh? Yeah. Just for everyone listening, make sure you get those requests in. Uh, and finally, closing out Group D, uh, Belize, the Belize Jaguars. The thing I want to talk about Belize is they put out on their Facebook an ad for the game, and it is fucking incredible. Like, the vibes are just <laughs> massive. Uh, we shared it on our Facebook page, if you're not already following us on Facebook, Podcacaf, uh, the World of Concaf podcast. Um, yeah, Belize. They've got, they tell you, bring out your flags, bring out your drums. Tickets are only $20. Make sure you show up and support your Jaguars. So that is a lot of the, Jaguar noises in that too. Oh yeah. Lots of, lot lots of, of lot lots of, of roaring. Yeah. yeah. Roaring. Yeah. Now Donald league B, we just went through all the teams. What stands out to you as the group or the team to watch of these teams? I mean, the team to watch is Guatemala to see if they actually do what they're supposed to and dominate. But you know me, I, I'm going to go with the home team here, uh, Vincey Heat. I, I want to see if they can kind of get it together. They've kind of struggled a lot lately, and I want to see if they can get it together. Uh, I know they're going to be playing uh, their games at home, which is kind of a, a, a big boost for them, given what we've seen in, in League C or League B with all these teams playing neutral sites. So I want to see them get out and get some W's and make it back to the promised land. I'm trying to get back down there. Oh, yeah. I need to, I need another game there to that for that. Either the United States needs to tank or <laughs> Vincey Heat needs to step up to the occasion. I hope they step up to the occasion. Listen, we'll get we'll get to the tanking thing later. Uh, for me, <laughs> for me, really, it's Group B because Group B there's four teams. Two of them were in League A and got relegated. Two of them, the other two, finished second in their group. So this. By definition, based on their last Nations League performances, that's the toughest group here. Um, so really interested to see if Haiti or Bermuda is the one that can win that group and move on. So that wraps up League B. We've got some other leagues to talk about. But first, we have a Jack Warner update. Um, Jack Warner. We? We. we. I, I've, I have a Jack Warner update. Thank you. Um, so this is the Jack Warner update segment. Every time that the former president of CONCACAF, uh, the Trinidad and Tobago leader, um, anytime he's in the news, we want to make sure that we give you an update of what's going on. Um, this one comes from Inside World Football. Um, it's kind of the source for my info here. Um, the extradition case of former CONCACAF president and FIFA vice president Jack Warner took another step forward last week, with the UK Privy Council hearing closing arguments from Warner's legal team. So basically, Jack Warner is still fighting his extradition uh, to the United States to face charges for the FIFA corruption scandal. The dude is pulling out all stops. This is like the last chance for him the uk privy council is the final decision maker on warner's appeal he's exhausted all his legal appeal channels in trinidad his last appeal being dismissed in trinidad in june 2019 so if the uk privy council says nah then he's really got no nothing left um the interesting thing is warner's challenging the legality of the extradition commonwealth and foreign territories act and a treaty signed by trinidad and tobago and the u.s the dude is like literally challenging international treaties to not get sent to the U S to face charges for these things that he did. Um, the other interesting thing is he was also in the news again recently. Um, apparently Trinidad and Tobago's Federation uh, they've been in quote unquote administration 
um, for financial reasons. So they've got a lot of creditors, um, a lot of debts, and their largest creditor is Jack Warner, who claims he is owed $22 million um, by the Federation. Um, that is questionable. Um, but Donald, Jack Warner, still, he just won't go away. We're waiting to hear what this Privy Council has to say. How, how are you feeling about this? Jack Warner sucks. I mean, thanks, Donald. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll uh, spend some music, and then we'll be right back. And next up, we'll talk to gay after this. Back on the World of Cockcap podcast. Now we're going through the leagues. I think next we're going to do League A. Now League A is the top league of the Cockcap Nations League. Uh, first place goes to the CNL Finals and qualifies for the 2023 Gold Cup. Second place goes to the 2023 Gold Cup. Third place is relegated to League B for the next Nations League and has to go to the prelims to qualify for the Gold Cup. Um, There's four three team groups. Um, Really it's the top dogs of CONCACAF. And this is fighting for a place in in the CONCACAF Nations League finals to compete for the most important trophy on the planet. Donald League A, we'll just start with group A. Who's in group A and we'll kind of go through this here. Yeah. So let's start with, uh, I think the top dogs of group A and that's Mexico. Um, Mexico, they just announced their roster, um, but they have also a couple of friendlies that they're going to use to warm up for the Nations League because they lost last time. So they have now recognized that you have to take this seriously. You have to prepare. Um, So they'll be playing friendlies against Nigeria, Uruguay and Ecuador. Wait, Donald, can you correct me? Mexico lost the last Nations League. They did. They did. They got to the final and then they lost. Uh, I, I think it was another team, but you know, you know what? Yeah. Let's talk about that team later. Yeah, I, th- we'll, I think we'll we know who we talk about. Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk about that later, but yes, they have realized that you have to take this seriously. If you're going to try and, you know, win, especially against the defending champions of which, you know, the team, it, the name escapes me, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to in a minute. Um, but yes, Mexico, uh, they are a team that's expected to contend once again for the title. Uh, again, they have three friendlies before they kick off. They have the back half of the window of uh, this double window is when they're going to do their matches. So they're only doing two of them. Uh, so they have opportunities to kind of get their teams ready uh, as they prepare for Nations League. And then obviously further beyond for the World Cup this fall. Yeah. And one of their friendlies, they're playing in Dallas, Texas. And I don't know if you saw it. They announced that this Mex tour, they're going to be playing friendlies in Dallas every year until 2026. They're going to be playing friendlies. They're going to be having camps. My kingdom for Mexico to actually play games in Mexico. That's I would love to see it. That's too easy. Well, I know you have to pull out all the stops if you want to go lose another Nations League final. Exactly. Um, so Mexico looking to repeat this time. Uh, next up, we've got Jamaica. Jamaica, they finished first in group, in, uh, group C of League B. They were promoted into league a for this tournament ranked 64th in the world uh things are a little rough right there for them um i don't know if you saw this they had a friendly against catalonia recently uh they played catalonia on may 25th uh they lost six nothing to catalonia which i must remind you is not a country it is it's like losing to cascadia like it's just not a thing but somehow catalonia has a national team uh, I did see Gerard De La Feu had a hat trick in this game. Um, just like absurd. But uh, Jamaica's squad got throttled by the not a country. Um, the bright spot for them is in that friendly 
they did give their debut with the national team to Omari Hutchinson. Uh, he's an 18 year old Mar- Arsenal midfielder um, coming out of the English youth system. Uh, they're really hoping that he could be a star for them in the future. And they're able to finally get him capped. Uh, it doesn't look like he's actually going to stick with the team. They did announce their roster. He's not on it, but they do have three other spots that have not been filled yet. Um, but Jamaica, don't don't lose to non-countries. Exactly. Um, and next up, and the final team in Group A is Suriname. Suriname also was promoted from League B. Um, they finished first in their group last time around. And they have a home game coming up versus Jamaica and Pari, uh, uh, Para. I keep saying this wrong. Para Maribo um, at, at their it. at their stadium down there. Yeah, it took me. It took me a minute. I apologize to the people in Para Maribo. Um, I have to say it twice. Uh, but yes, they have the game coming up against them. But that's going to be the big one because I think one of those teams is going to have to win that game to have a shot at contending with Mexico because Mexico was shooting to win all four games. This is going to be uh, a game where who's fighting, not necessarily fighting for second, but the second place team is the one is going to have the chance to kind of pick off uh, Mexico at the top to do that. They have to win. Uh, Suriname has to win uh, their games against Jamaica. That's just Mm -hmm. key. For sure. Uh, So that is group a moving on to group B. We'll start it off Costa Rica. If you listen to our last episode, um we deeply covered costa rica you know what's going on with them uh they've announced their roster kaylor novice is not on it he is going to join the team in qatar for their world cup intercontinental playoff that they've got on june 14th against new zealand so as much as they are focusing on the importance of concave nations league they do have a spot in the world cup on the line coming up uh ranked 31st in the world they won their group last time in Nations League, uh, winning Group D. But, yeah, June 14th is what they've got circled right now. Hanging with them is Panama. Panama uh, also was in League A, but they finished second in Group B last time around. Uh, here's the thing about them. They have a game on June 2nd against Costa Rica. As you mentioned, Costa Rica is playing uh, a game, a couple of games uh, in the first part of the window before they go to Qatar. Once the game against Costa Rica is over, uh, the Panama coach, Thomas Christensen, he said he's going to present a brand new squad for the games against Martinique that are coming up. They have two games against Martinique. So they may have uh, some players registered on the list, but it's going to be a fairly new squad. They're going to have a lot of turnover between those two games. So that's an interesting approach to the nation's league, to the group stage, especially given that they're going to have three games in this double window. And finally in group B, we've got Martinique. Uh, They finished second in group C last time around, also in league A. Interesting thing about Martinique is they've got some dual national panic going on right now. Julio Denisa, who plays for Le Mans in France. And I want to make sure I have, I get to say Le Mans more than once. Uh, He's got five caps with the Martinique national team. Uh, he was actually called into Madagascar's squad for the African Cup of Nations qualifying this month. So he's got five caps for Martinique, but Madagascar is also trying to cap tie him, which is interesting because Martinique is not a real country in FIFA. So big, uh, solid player. They might not, ha- they're not going to have for this uh, Nations League. So that's Group B. Group C, Donald, want to start off with Group C? I think it was the yeah. first team. We got a lot to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. And let me get right to it. It's Canada. Um, Canada, who uh, finished second in Group A last time around in League A. They still remain in League A, but also uh, was was first place in the octagonal during World Cup qualifying, qualifying for just the second time in their history. They have a lot going on right now. Let me start with the roster first, because there's two guys notably that I want to make a note of. One, Alfonso Davies is back in the lineup on the roster for Canada. Very, very happy as just a fan of the game to see him back playing after uh, him getting developing myocarditis as a result of getting COVID during the winter. So, you know, very, very glad to see him back. We hope that he's well and that he continues to do well for Canada. There's another guy that is of interest to both Canada and the United States. His name is Luca Coliosho. He plays at Espanol in Spain, and he is 
he was called up for the Canadian roster, but is also eligible to represent the United States. He, I don't think he's decided yet whether or not to accept the call up, but this is obviously a situation where we have a dual national that has two very good teams to decide between or two very you know, different programs. I think the idea from the United States standpoint is that he is going to go there and, and they've done this with dual nationals before kind of saying, Hey, get a taste of the other side and then get a taste of us camp and then see which one you like and, and, and use that to kind of make your decision kind of like a college kid taking his official visits uh, during recruiting season. So uh, before, before I go to the, the meat of Canada, uh, Eric, do you have anything to comment on those two uh, developments with the roster? Yeah. I mean, Gracie Davies back the thing with Cole Yashiva, Cole, what was it? Luca, we'll go with Luca. Luca. I've, I've been struggling with the name. Um, he, they were expecting to be able to run him out in the friendly that they had scheduled, but that wouldn't have cap tied him to Canada. It would have been just an appearance in a friendly. Uh, but he's not going to be able to play a friendly now. Oh yeah. Well, speaking of that friendly, that friendly was going to be on June fifth against Iran, uh, and when it was scheduled, uh, I, I need to go back before we talk about the actual game. Before, when it was scheduled, there was a lot of outcry from Canadians, Canadian politicians, uh, Ukrainian Canadians, and also uh, a specific set of Canadians. There was a, a bombing um, a few years ago, and back in 2020, where Iran shot down a plane carrying dozens of Canadian citizens. It was world news. Uh, it was right you know, during the pandemic, so there was not a lot to talk about outside of COVID. So this was very big news. And a lot of people were upset that Canada soccer had scheduled, not just scheduled Iran for a friendly, but scheduled them to come to Canada, to come to Vancouver to play. And the pressure mounted not just from uh, fans and from citizens, but also from politicians, notably Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. And just today, as we record on Thursday, May 26th, that match was canceled by Canada Soccer. They, uh, there was also an issue of Iran not being able to receive visas because, again, they are not on the, the two n- nations have beef and they're not necessarily talking to each other. And so there's not a lot of, you know, angst for them to kind of approve visas for Iran soccer team to come play a game there. The other thing was Iran was also supposed to play Ecuador in Canada. Uh, I think that is now either it has not been officially canceled, but we have to assume that that match is canceled. Uh, just a, it, it's just a mess of a situation um, and where something where geopolitics kind of uh, have inter- not necessarily interfered, but shown their faces in this scheduling of this friendly, um, Eric. And, and again, you know, the United States is not prone to this, is not immune to this as well, because we will be facing Iran in the World Cup, but that is in the World Cup. And it's not a scheduling of friendly for them, but this is just a mess of a situation, really. Yeah, no, it's a giant fumble by Canada soccer because uh, now they don't have a friendly to warm up for Nations League. Uh, you're, you know, they're going to the World Cup, and that's a lost opportunity to get your guys a run out, especially all these young guys like Luca, who uh, you want to get a look at. Um, and it's interesting that they had even scheduled Iran to come play because you wonder who actually benefits more from – Iran playing Canada in a friendly like that with Iran and the U S group is Iran trying to get experience against the CONCACAF team or is Canada kind of doing the U S a solid by getting a look better look at Iran and something that they're familiar with, but just a really weird situation. And uh, now Canada has got some sitting around until they've got their uh, nation's league opener. Yeah. If this is something like back when they scheduled the game and there was a lot of pressure mounting, this was a few weeks ago. They probably at that point still had an opportunity to kind of say, hey, you know, we made a mistake. We can't make this happen, but let's get another opponent. At this point, with a week before that game is was supposed to happen, it's it's very, very unlikely that they're going to get anybody, even a you know, a, a, a small team or like you said, like a Catalonia or something like that. It's going to be very, very, you know, next to impossible for them to secure a new opponent for that date. Yeah. Well, I wonder if that Iran Ecuador thing doesn't happen if they can make that work, but I don't know. Possibly, possibly. I don't know. Just spitballing. I'm not scheduling games here. Uh, moving on in Group C, we've got Honduras. Honduras, of course, won Group C in the last Nations League, losing to the United States in the semifinals of the 
the inaugural CNL finals. Um, interim coach Diego Vasquez, uh, he took over for Hernan Dario Gomez. He's taken the squad in for this one. Honduras, of course, ranked 82nd in the world and looking for another kick at the can in the CNL finals. And the final team in this group is Curacao. And Curacao has been going through some a, a little bit of a makeover, uh, at least from a leadership standpoint. They have a new coach, Art Langler, uh, and their old coach, Goose Hiddink, is now the technical director. Uh, and so they have that going, and at least hopefully their hope is that that'll help create some stability uh, with regards to the program and just the technical side of things. They did have a friendly uh, back on May 20th against Ajax, and they did not do well against Ajax. But Curacao, 79th in the world, they were in League A last time. They held their own, not just in there, but also in World Cup qualifying uh, getting all the way to the point right before, uh, right before the octagon. But this group is is mean because Canada, Honduras, and Curacao are all very strong teams. All are capable of doing damage against one another, and this will be a nice group to watch. Yeah, so gonna be very interesting. Group C, Group D. We're gonna start with the champions, the only team in the world, the only country who has ever tasted true glory, who has ever won ever lifted the CONCACAF Nations League trophy. First up is the United States of America. Uh, of course, they won Group A in the last Nations League. They won the CNL Finals. They are ranked 15th in the world right now. And the U.S., I mean, they're looking to win again. A um, lot of big games they've got coming up. Uh, of course, they're in the World Cup this fall. So they've got two good friendlies. They're playing Morocco in Cincinnati on June 1st. They're playing Uruguay in Kansas City on the 5th before they head to Austin to kick off their Nations League uh, schedule. They do have some injury issues. I think the most notable thing for this squad right now is that Miles Robinson, who was like a solid one half of the center back pairing, uh, he tore his Achilles. So his availability for the world cup is in question, but it will be interesting to see how the squad adapts to not having that pairing of Robinson and Walker Zimmerman on their back line. Uh, the interesting thing with the U S is they do have a dual national call up. It's kind of a surprise and being with the world cup coming up, getting a new guy in the squad is an interesting thing. Uh, Malik Tillman, who is with Bayern Munich, uh, he is getting his first call in to the U.S. national team. Uh, not quite sure. There was talk whether or not his FIFA paperwork was even completed yet, but he will be in camp. The hope, the hope is that he will get his debut, may possibly be playing in these Nations League games, uh, but it's a young player with a lot of potential. I'm excited to see him. It's going to be uh, great to see him. I, I haven't seen much of him. Uh, but have been always very intrigued by him and his brother. Uh, if you remember, his brother uh, was also a guy that was kind of coveted by by Americans. He was another dual national as well. Um, but like you said, his paperwork is not ready. But the great thing about the United States is they have four matches to make it happen. Um, yeah. So it's not like if he misses uh, the game against Morocco, that it's all set and done, that he won't be able to get to play. He can continue to work through the squad and practice. And hopefully maybe he gets his debut against Uruguay. But if not, then the idea is to hopefully bring them out during uh, the Nations League uh, group stage. I do want to move on to. Uh, I was going to say the other key thing is um, Weston McKinney back from injury. He could possibly get be getting back in, which is huge, huge for the U.S. national team. Arguably the best midfielder in the world. Yeah. You heard me. What? Right. Wes is back. Uh, excited to have him back in the squad. Uh, so the other team that they will be, one of the teams that the United States will be facing is El Salvador. El Salvador has an interesting schedule because they have three Nations League games. They play uh, at, they host Grenada on June 4th. They go to Grenada on June 7th, and then they host the United States on June 14th. Between the road game at Grenada and home against the United States, they will play at Columbia on June 10th. So uh, that'll be interesting. They don't have full squad yet, uh, or at least details, but they did call in a domestic camp 
and those guys are training with the U20s right now. So uh, we don't know the schedule, uh, or at least know the full like 23-man roster there, or 26-man roster that they're going to unveil. But it is interesting that they have a scheduled road friendly in the middle of all this. It's not like they're playing at home in the middle of all this. They're going to go from Grenada, basically, to Columbia, and then back home to face the United States. Yeah, tough schedule. Um, finally, wrapping up Group D, Grenada, the Spice Boys, ranked 170th in the world. They got promoted out of League B last time around. I can tell Donald, myself, we are very excited for Grenada away uh, for the U.S. national team. So. Yeah. <laughs> we are well, we going to be there. Um, Look, they are the Spice Boys, and boy, they better have some spices ready. Yeah. Uh, so Grenada, really excited about the interesting call-in for them, Lucas Aikens. Uh, he's with Mansfield Town in League Two in England. Um, he was called in looking for his first appearance. Um, he had been called in previously. He's a good player. But he was called in March 2020, but their games got canceled. So he still hasn't had an appearance yet. So looking for him to make some moves with Grenada, um, who have a tough sledding with the El Salvador, a very good El Salvador team, and the defending champion United States of America. Donald, is there anything in League A that stands out to you? Yeah, Group C. Like I mentioned, Group C is a is a mean one with three really tough teams, teams that are capable of beating the other. And, you know, I know Canada is supposed to be the class of that group, but Honduras and Curacao are very capable of winning that group. So um, that'll be a nice one to watch. Yeah. For me, Group B, the fact that Costa Rica is kind of building up towards that playoff, Panama, it's there for the taking if they want to have a good June window and have a chance to win that group. Um, Costa Rica not bringing Keeler Navas for these two Nations League games. Panama, it's right there. Go get it. So that wraps up League A. And now, finally, honestly, like, what CONCACAF Nations League is all about. Let's move on to League C. League C is the bottom tier, but it's the top in our hearts. Uh, really the only thing you're playing for in League C. First in the group gets promoted to League B for the next edition, and they get a spot in the Gold Cup prelims. For so, so for some of these smaller nations, this is their way in to the Gold Cup. And, you know, these aren't necessarily good teams that they're playing, so the opportunity is there to get moved up and win some games and boost your FIFA ranking, which is very important. The interesting thing about League C is there's four groups. Group A has four teams. Group B has three teams. Group C has three teams. Group D has three teams. So it's uneven groups. Group A is getting more games in. It's, but it's all just beautiful CONCACAF action. So let's start with Group A. Um, I'll start off Bonaire. Bonaire is not a FIFA country. Uh they finished second in Group B in League C last time around. They'll be playing their games at a neutral site. Um, they'll be at Curacao for their home matches um, at Rignal Jean Francisca Stadium in Williamstead. Uh, joining them in Group A is the Turks and Caicos. Uh, Turks and Caicos were in Group C last or League C last time around. They're ranked 206 in the world, and they are looking to try and get a program established. They did win two to one over the Bahamas in a friendly with goals by Billy Forbes and junior Paul. Um, but this is a, it, they had a, another friendly at Barbados where they lost four to two. So this team is just trying to get ready for this league, uh, th- this nation's league group stage to try and see if they can bust some heads and try and get out of this group. Yeah. Note for uh, fans of the Turks and Caicos going to the game, um, their home games, just be, be aware that the games are non-smoking and no coolers or glass bottles will be allowed in the stadium. So that's, that's unfortunate. Important to note. Uh, next up, the U S Virgin islands, the dashing Eagle uh, ranked 208th in the world. They finished last in group a last time they got stuck in the 14 group again in league C. Uh, both their away games are actually neutral site games in Curacao, um, but they'll be playing their two home games in the Virgin Islands and looking to improve on their finish. I mean, they're ranked 208th in the world. A couple of results can really move the needle for them. 
And finally, we have St. Martin, the Dutch side of the island. Uh, they were also in League C last time around, and they have a, a two or at least a three match window uh, in this double window. They are also playing in Curacao at uh, as a neutral site, and they have one guy who uh, is a player, uh, Iluanga Pata. Uh, remember that name because he has been selected for the upcoming Nations League matches. He is Saint Martin, Mar- uh, Saint Martin born, and he is ready to roll. That's Group A. Group B. Donald, do you want to start us off? Yeah, we'll start with St. Kitts and Nevis, who uh, was relegated from League B. But in World Cup qualifying, we talked about them a great deal. Again, one of these teams that I think is on the verge of being poised to make that leap to the next level and play. They are right there. Um, The Sugar Boys, uh, again, they can do this by really dominating their group here in league C and getting promoted back to league a or or league B. But this is a team that I think is way better than what they are looking right in, in league C. They are the top ranked team in the entire league C. So uh, I ranked 142nd. I think they are poised to try and make that leap to try and get into the, you know, closer to 100 uh, by next year. For sure. Uh, Next up, we got Aruba Aruba ranked. 200th in the world. They actually were also relegated on a League B, having finished fourth in Group C last time around. Uh, Coach Marvik Bermuda's squad uh, will be playing their home matches at a neutral site. They'll also be at Jean Francisco Stadium in Williamstead, Curacao. And finally, we have St. Martin, the French side of the island. They will be playing in Group B, but they will not be playing on the island. They will be playing their games at Raymond E. Guichard Stadium in the Valley, Anguilla. Uh, the St. Swallows are looking to try and get out of League C, uh, but it's a tall task for them, again, playing neutral sites on the beautiful island of Anguilla. With that scenery, that is a big distraction for this team. I promise you. <laughs> the scenery is a distraction for all of these teams. I haven't even been there, and I just know the scenes. I know what they talk about. Yeah. It's it's vibes are immaculate. In maintaining the vibes, we're getting to Group C. Group C will start off with St. Lucia. Now, St. Lucia, as you remember, they dropped out of World Cup qualifying. Not great for their program. They had gotten relegated out of League B in the Nations League last time around, finishing fourth in Group B, ranked 176th in the world. They do have a new coach, uh, Stern John, the Trinidad and Tobago legend. Uh, He was coaching Anguilla and has now taken over the St. Lucia program. Um, They will be playing Trinidad and Tobago in a closed-door friendly on May 30th, getting warmed up for this. St. Lucia, I mean, they're looking to get promoted back to League B, uh, and they got a great opportunity to do so. Also looking to make the leap back to League B is Dominica. Um, They were in in League B and finished fourth in Group D last time around. Uh, but they, uh, the Nature Boys are looking to get back. They have played uh, games. They played some warm-up games against the Vinci Heat. We talked about that uh, before the break, so I'm not going to bore you with those details uh, because they played against Vinci Heat, and they should have been uh, Vinci Heat. That's our team. Um, but anyway, they are actually going to have two home games. Uh, one home game is going to be at a neutral site. That is the game against Anguilla. They will be playing that game in St. Kitts and Nevis in Basseterre. Uh, but their home game against St. Lucia will be at Windsor Park Stadium in Dominica. And finally, close to our heart, ranked last in the world, Anguilla. The Dolphins, I mean, it's there's nowhere to go to but up, baby. Uh, They finished third in Group C of League C last time around, ranked 210th in the world. The thing you got to know, that team store is open. You go get your kits right now. Stimulus Athletics got it on their website. You can order jerseys. They got shorts now. Long got- sleeve jerseys for those of you who apparently just want to just sweat during the summer. You could do that. Yeah, you can do that and support Anguilla because it doesn't matter what they do on the field. They look good doing it. Uh, arguably the best jerseys in the world. They are top two. Uh, with Nigeria, and then on, on a given day, you can flip a coin as to who wants one or who wants two. It is a it is a teeter totter. They go up, they go down, but they never get beyond two. <laughs> That's Group C. Uh, group D. 
Uh, we'll start it off. Uh, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico ranked 172nd in the world. They finished second in Group C in League C. Uh, you would assume that they're the favorite in this group. Uh, El Huracan Azul uh, just announced their roster. Uh, they've got some very, a lot of lower division guys from across the U.S. Uh, but if you want to attend the game, tickets are on sale soon for the match against the British Virgin Islands. Go to prticket.com. Go support El Huracan Azul. And joining them in Group D also was in League C last time around. But again, the vibes immaculate. We saw it firsthand, Eric. Yes, We've sir. Seen them. I'm talk. I'm talking about the Cayman Islands. They will be playing their games at Truman Bodden Sports Complex. But but there is possibility that there may be some new fields under construction. At least that's according to their FA president, Alfredo Whitaker, who in an interview with a local uh, media said that they are constructing two brand new fields very soon with the hopes to open them by October. So, you know, their their home game, at least their first home game, um, will be at Truman Baden. But hey, that game uh, next year, maybe those are at a new stadium. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I d- in doing my research on Cayman Islands, I did find out, like searching for a Cayman Islands Football Association, I did find that there is a Cayman Islands Flag Football Association and Team Burger Shack was the league's most winningest team. They finished the regular season this year's campaign five and three. Just shout out to Burger Shack uh, vibes, the, vibes. The Cayman Islands out of Flag 10. Football no Association. Uh, <laughs> a lot of good, a lot of great places in the Cayman Islands. I can't wait to get back there. Uh, and finally, wrapping up Group D, the British Virgin Islands ranked 209th in the world, just ahead of Anguilla. They finished third in Group B last time around. They're hoping to get some results for this time. Uh, tickets on sale for their match June 3rd. $10 for adults, $5 for children under, under the age of 12. So there's your League C. The fives are up top. The team's rankings are down bottom. Donald, what are you really looking for out of these matches? I think it's Group B. Um, I mentioned St. Kitts and Nevis being a team that's on the verge of doing something great. They just need to get to that next level. Aruba is a team that has been actively recruiting for a chance to try and take it up a notch. Uh, Both of them were in League B last time, and I think they are both going to battle hard to get back to League B. For me, I mean, Group D, Puerto Rico seems like it's uh, they're on the way up, and they've got two easy teams in their group came down as bridge for giants. I can see Puerto Rico running the table in group D and getting promoted for the next time around, which is really great for their program. And I'm looking forward to seeing that Puerto Rico. I mean, it's there. The thing is like you have one good performance for these league C teams. If you have one good campaign, you finish first in your group not only are you getting promoted, you go to the Gold Cup prelims and you're getting good games against good teams. Um, and if you find your way into the Gold Cup, that's huge for any of these programs, uh, getting that kind of experience. So It'd be great to see Puerto Rico make that leap. Yeah. And it'll be interesting to see how St. Lucia rebounds. I mean, they didn't have a World Cup qualifying campaign. They've got Stern John as the coach who had been making some moves, improving the program in Anguilla. Like St. Lucia should win that group. We'll see what ends up happening. So CONCACAF Nations League, it's back. Is there anything else you're excited about, Donald? No, I mean, I'm the whole tournament. I mean, I'm just excited about this whole tournament. It's great. It's um, the, uh, the ability, the accessibility of being able to watch them all on Paramount Plus or, or again, Televisa Univision um, is amazing to be able to just, again, check out some of these matches. In, in, you know, we're going to have matches just about every day, basically from June 2nd through June 14th. Like, yeah, we have a ton of games. Yeah, there's at least four matches a day every day for almost two weeks. The only day without games is June 8th which I'm guessing is just an observance of World Oceans Day. Um, there are no yeah. games. Yeah, well, I mean, underneath. Caribbean makes sense. Yeah. yeah, but, like, get to watch these games. It's, it's it's you know, you get to see some of these teams play, and, again, it, it helps 
fans of other teams because when you see some of these players, there are some really great players in CONCACAF that just don't get the shine because people think, oh, they play for insert island, that they must not be that good. Some of these players are really good. And, you know, check them out and watch. And, again, this is some for the bigger teams in CONCACAF, notably North America, Canada, Mexico, the United States. These teams are going to have to contend with some of these playing surfaces, with some of these facilities, um, going on the road to a place that, you know, can hold a swimming pool and also can hold 200 people, right? Like they yeah. have to be able to contend with all of these elements and they have to be able to still perform. So it's not a given that some of these big teams won't or are just going to breeze through. They, we've seen in the previous edition that teams will struggle on these playing surfaces and in these different facilities, it is time for some of the Caribbean teams and some of the Central American teams. They can use this to their advantage and step up. Yeah. I mean, the interesting thing is last time around in 2019, 20 edition, the games were in the fall, like they were October, November international days. Mm -hmm. These are team. Some of these better teams, like they're going to the Caribbean in June. Like it ain't going to be cool out there. Um, and with the extended window, these teams are going to get to be together longer. They might have their shit together. Like we could see more upsets this time around than we did last time, I think. And just like the quantity of CONCACAF action we're going to get. It's just like, I'm, I'm thrilled that we're here and it's back. And starting June 2nd, I'm just going to have Paramount Plus on like nonstop. Yep. Get the app, get the, get the, you know, get it on your computer, get an iPad, get that app, put it on your TV, try to multi screen if you can, get a second TV, get a fourth TV, whatever you need to do. All these games are going to be on. It's going to be live. So, well, wrap us up. By the way, I did want to note, uh, I did shout out World Oceans Day on June 8th. Apparently, June 9th is International Dark and Stormy Day. So, mark that in your calendar. Uh, I'll, Austin, pl- uh, people in Austin, please prepare dark and stormies for everybody. Yeah. Donald and I will both be on site in Austin, Texas for the USA Grenada game. Are you going to El Salvador? I am. I don't miss Nations League, baby. Come on now. Flights were like 600 bucks by the time I could book. And I, I mean, not considering spirit because I am. I, I love Nations League. You're I don't an adult. Know I love, I'm, a, I'm an adult. But uh, so. Either way, Podka Calf, it can be on site. Um, we'll be covering it nonstop for the next few weeks. We really encourage you to keep up with us on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at Podka Calf. Make sure you join us on Patreon. Uh, shout out to all of our subscribers, patreon.com slash podcast. We'll have some additional content there. I, I know last episode I did shout out that we would have some Costa Rica content. I've had some technical issues with that stuff. It'll get up there eventually. Uh, we want to definitely share the trips that we're taking. Um, but yeah, follow us at podcast down. Where can people find you? At Blazing DW on Instagram and Facebook uh, and Twitter. Uh, I, I'm also on Facebook, but don't find me there. Find yeah. me on Twitter and Instagram. All right. Um, Jonathan was able to join us. Make sure you follow him at, at J Slape SSP on Twitter. Um, He'll have coverage of everything as well, as well as Nashville SC and MLS um, for Broadway Sports Media. But yeah, that about wraps us up. CONCACAF Nations League. It is the best thing in sports. And if you disagree with us, I will come to your house and punch you in the face. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Cue the music. Let's go. Let's go.